This is an issue that is absolutely critical. I do not want my taxpayer dollars going to fund Planned Parenthood. Well, I'm James Robinson, founder of The Stream, and I want to thank you for visiting The Stream. This is a, a new aspect. I'm going to be talking to people that I believe have love for freedom and love for everyone on this planet that God loves. And even those we disagree with, we love. So I want you to know we're doing this, and I'm talking to these really gifted leaders, highly respected people, because we love you and those you love. Talking to George Wood today, he was the uh, general superintendent of the Assemblies of God. When over four years ago, I called him and I said, uh, George, uh, this uh, man running for president, Donald Trump, has uh, spent time with me at Ben Carson's request, and he's let it, made it clear that he wants to hear from people who love God with all their heart. He made it clear to me that he actually believes there's only one father that knows best, and he'd like to know more about that. And he wanted church leaders, you know, across all those lines that too often divide us to come together. Sammy Rodriguez uh, was someone that uh, he's expressed an interest in, and we we're very close. And Sammy said to me, if you can get George Wood to uh, come on this council to give advice to Donald Trump, I'll come on. But I don't want to come without the general superintendent. And I called you, and I told you. And I said, I've spent time with him, George. He, he says he really wants to hear. And I think as surely as uh, Pharaoh counseled, uh, I mean, was counseled by Joseph and the kings by the prophets, I said, I think we need to do it. Would you do it? And you said, yes. Tell me, why did you accept that? Because none, none of us would have said we were for Donald Trump. Well, I'll never forget that call. Uh, you know, the reason I said yes is because I was concerned about the issue of religious freedom and I knew that the way the Obama-Clinton uh, axis uh, was going uh, would be to severely limit religious freedom in the United States, especially as it related to institutions like Christian colleges and universities, which at the time I was chairman of. So uh, although we all know that uh, President Trump has um, uh, a personality that uh, uh, is jarring and often speaks maybe before he thinks. Uh, nevertheless, uh, his policies were uh, consistent with what I believed we needed uh, in, in the country. And I felt it was uh, my uh, obligation and privilege to really um, back a person who represented policies, uh, not only on religious liberty, but uh, pro-life issues that were very important uh, to me personally and to the ministry that I represented. Well, uh, when you made that decision, you made Sammy happy and a lot of people happy. When you came in and saw this very diverse circle of leaders across all denominational lines who really held to the authority of the Bible and biblical principles, were you amazed at the diversity in the room and yet the supernatural unity and the the focused prayer for God's best for America. Were you amazed at what you saw when you met this group and saw how they met together? I don't think I'd ever been part of a, a group which integrated uh, what we in the Pentecostal world call hard shell Baptists <laughs> or very conservative Baptists with what, what mainstream Pentecostals call um, maybe um, out of the box charismatics. Uh, so you had the incredible breadth of the uh, Christian evangelical movement and uh, people who believed in uh, spiritual gifts being for today and people who believed they were uh, yesterday apostolic gifts and a lot of differences in terms of their views on divine healing, upon faith, uh, even uh, the historic uh, division between Calvinists and Arminian theology, not Arminian, but Arminian theology. And it was amazing to see that we all clustered around some things that we felt uh, would better America. And that's why we were engaged. Well, hasn't it been a beautiful picture to watch the love that prevails in these rooms, even though we know we may have some particular differences? Uh, we haven't made an idol out of that difference. 
We have made it a goal to have God's best for everybody. He loves so much he gave his son to redeem. Have you right. been amazed to watch that? Uh, and just, it just, to me, it just, it takes my breath. Yeah. You know, same here. I've always believed and worked for Christian unity and have used so often the phrase, what, you, what unites us is greater than what divides us. And I think that what we found together was that what indeed united us was far greater than anything that had divided us. Well, we knew we didn't want to go a particular direction, but I think all of us were, were really amazed when Donald Trump won. I talked to him right yeah, after. I was shocked. Found out he was, and he was, was, he was amazing. One of the happiest nights of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was, we still didn't know what we had with Donald Trump. Okay. Now, you agree that these church leaders have stuck to biblical truth without ever compromising, and they are filled with courage and compassion. All this council of evangelicals that get criticized and misrepresented continually, do you agree that you're seeing God's love, his courage, and genuine compassion in this group that is advising the president or seeking to? Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. And what I see happening for those who are the critics of our group, um, and some of them, unfortunately, within evangelical ranks themselves, is that you, if you're going to um, dismiss a person's policy views, you simply will go after them on a caricaturization, characterize who you are, and then we'll um, marginalize you, attempt to marginalize you, then we'll discriminate against you and ultimately we'll persecute you. And I think that's the drift of where the culture has been going, that evangelicals uh, for the president or evangelicals in general, because there's heavy support, as you know, among evangelicals for the president's policies. Uh, the, the, the attempt is, if I can, if I can uh, define you, I can confine you. So the way to, de to define is to say that evangelicals represent all the things that are noxious to uh, the cancel culture movement, uh, which is we are for um, life, we are for religious freedom, we are for um, a society in which people can live in safety uh, without mayhem and riot and uh, uh, social disturbance. Uh, we are for a just society. All these things we are for but uh, if you listen to the mainstream media and many of the critics of the Evangelical Faith Advisory Group, they will, they will attempt to put us, paint us into a corner of uh, being what we are really not. I know they want to know, the viewers, everybody that's watching this who comes to the stream, and everybody just out of curiosity, do you believe that the president really wants to hear what these leaders say and can you confirm after four years and four years steady, he has invited us, he has spent time with us, he has listened, he's not pushed back when he's being corrected or challenged, he seems grateful for the counsel and the advice and the love and the prayers. Would you say that's a true characterization of the president that you've been around for four yes. years? Absolutely, James. In, in my lifetime, there's never been a president that has welcomed uh, uh, evangelicals uh, into his life, into his office, like this president has. Uh, some of the presidents in the past uh, have courted us for their votes, and then once they were in office, the door and the access became closed. Uh, this president has never closed that access. That doesn't mean he's listened to us on every issue, but I don't think I've ever uh, certainly never heard of a president that would uh, not only welcome uh, preachers like you and me and others into his office, but ask us to lay hands on him and pray for him and pray for the country. It's been an amazing experience to have that opportunity with him. That's not saying he's perfect. That's not saying we agree with everything he says or does, but it does say we have never had a president that has given such uh, an open welcome to those who uh, serve Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we felt that same welcome from Melania and from all of his children. Uh, and I don't think any of us ever heard him express an interest in their well-being, always in the well-being of the American people that the president says he's trying to serve. Is that little uh, 
uh, assessment that I just shared true in your eyes? Well, that's true. And I remember uh, on one occasion when I, I was at, a, at the White House and there was a, a dinner for about 40 of us uh, that are part of the Faith Advisor Group. And I was sitting at the table with uh, Jared and Ivanka. I'd never met them before. And and uh, so when they sat down, I said, uh, would you mind if I took your picture? And uh, Ivanka jumped up and said, not unless you're in it. I mean, <laughs> the, the kindness uh, as we sat for two hours and talked together, the graciousness. Now, I know that they are of a different faith, uh, Jared and Ivanka, than you and I hold. But, uh, you know, the, the kindness, uh, the consideration, uh, the friendliness, uh, I, was, I was really moved by that, deeply impressed by that. Do you think if those who are opposing the re-election of Donald Trump, and all of us pray that God will continue to shape him like yielded clay, that is shapeable, and that we'll all be that way, do you see those that are running against him and all those that are attacking him and the major media, I mean, you've got 80, 85% of the media that is so 100% against him and so filled with hate that they can actually feed the fires of all this rebellion and destruction today. Do you see that if we place the leadership of our country in the hands of that mindset that basically may say they believe in God, but they don't believe in a biblical worldview, they don't believe in absolutes or principles that are historically confirmed to be reliable and when violated are catastrophic in the outcome. Do you believe if this left, as I call it, the, the opposite of right, if they win, do you believe our nation and freedom is in seri is serious, serious trouble? Uh, I do. I have read the 110-page manifesto of, of Biden and Sanders. Uh, it is a blueprint for the growth of the federal government and its invasion and intrusion into every area of our life. And it has aspects of its uh, agenda that I believe are um, injurious to religious freedom and injurious to life. And you're right, the media, mainstream media, I, I was watching uh, ABC Evening News, which is probably of the three networks, the most, uh, the least leftist. Maybe that's the way to put it. And it was the day that the president of Mexico met with Trump, which was a pretty significant occasion. And, and what they said in their press conference together. ABC Evening News did not even give that meeting one second of airtime. Why? Because it would have helped the president with the Hispanic population in America. They weren't going to cover it. And I, what we are seeing is the media operating as an arm of the Biden campaign. That, and if, uh, if Vice President Biden does happen to win uh Watch who will be in the cabinet, watch who will be in the staff, who will really be running this country. It won't be him. It will be the most leftist, um, uh, semi, perhaps totally Marxist uh, mentality that this country has ever experienced. One last word to all the Christians. Uh, there may be nothing more important than prayer, but they certainly do need to take a stand for the principles that foundation, the foundation of freedom and protect them. One word from you to all who believe God wants the best for us and he is able to help us accomplish what is best together. What would you say to them? Well, I would say this is a, probably one of the most important elections in American history, maybe the most important since 1860 when Abraham Lincoln was elected because whoever wins uh, in this election is gonna really chart a history for the future of America simply in terms of things like the Supreme Court appointments uh, that are coming up and the impact they will have on religious liberty and pro-life. Uh, if, uh, for example, the Democrat Party wins uh, both houses of Congress and the presidency, the first thing they will do is pass the Equality Act, which uh, the House did pass in 2017, but it never got to the Senate. The Equality Act will really severely strip important elements of religious freedom in our country. Uh, if the Democratic platform or the Biden, I should say the Biden-Sanders uh, agreement uh, promises to fully fund Planned Parenthood. So if you as a Christian want to vote for 
government money, your tax dollars funding abortion, then you should vote for Biden. But if you uh, are against that as a fundamental principle, you know, Mother Teresa, I thought years ago at the National Prayer Breakfast put it best with uh, then President Clinton in attendance when she basically said, if you're wrong on the issue of life, pro-life, then I don't trust you on any other issue. And I thought that was a pretty brave statement for that little woman at a national prayer breakfast. But I, I have the similar feeling to, to her that this is a this is a issue that is absolutely critical. I do not want my taxpayer dollars going to fund Planned Parenthood. I was sitting right in front of her and I just thought how courageous she is and compassion. I wouldn't have been born had the Roe versus Wade Act been there. Most of you know that. Thank you. Thank you, George. You really are a blessing. Thanks for sharing life and love, not only with all the world of people who listen, but also with our national leader. God bless you, George. Thank you.